now that we know, it's time to grow. Let's go in our Bibles to John 14, 9. John 14, 9. Good job. Good job, good job, good job. Do you need to go to the bathroom? Kaysen, do you need to go to the bathroom? Then be still. John 14, 9. It's going to be right there on the screen. John 14, 9. Now that we know it's time to grow, the Bible says that knowledge, knowledge alone puffs up. Just like if you keep eating and eating and eating and you never take a dump, what's happening to your intestines? You're constipated. If you never pee, right? What? No, worse things than diabetes happen. But if you keep eating and drinking, but you never, it never goes away, it never goes away, it stays in there, you just get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Your intestines get bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually they would, like, explode, and then you would pass away, right, because of all the toxins in your body. Well, the Bible says that knowledge alone, say knowledge alone, it puffs up. It makes people think that there's something they're not. That's why it's so important that I, I don't just know the word, but I allow the Holy Spirit to show me the word. And then I examine myself and see where I am with the word. And then I actually do the word. Because doing the word is what is going to cause growth in your life. Doing the word will produce growth. And look to your neighbor and say, we need to grow. So we've talked about this already. John 14, verse 9. It says this. In order for us to know God, we, there's two things that we do. And let's look at these verses. Jesus said unto Philip, because Philip said, if you look in verse 8, Lord, show us the Father. He said, God, Jesus, I want to know God. That's what Jesus was um, asked by Philip. Philip said, Jesus, I want to know God. And look what Jesus said. Jesus said to him, have I been so long time with you and you still don't know me, Philip? He that has seen me or known me has seen the Father and I have showed you the Father. Jesus was saying to Philip, Philip said, hey, Jesus, we want to know God. And Jesus said, this is how you know God. And what did he say? The way you know God is by what? Have I not spent so much time with you? Don't you know me? Look what it says. And yet you have not known me. You have not known me. Philip said, Philip said to Jesus, Jesus, I want to know God. And then Jesus told Philip, don't you know me? So what was Jesus saying? If you want to know God, who do you need to get to know? Jesus. Jesus. If I want to know God, I want to get to know Jesus. Pastor Dean has a book that's called Jesus, the Definition of God. Because sometimes people say, well, God will do this, God will do that. But if Jesus never did it, is that really God? No, because no, Jesus himself said, if you've seen me, if you know me, then you know God. Well, Jesus isn't walking around on the planet today, right? No. So for you and I as believers that are living in this dispensation or in this time where Jesus isn't here, how do we get to know God? We get to know Jesus, but how is that? Go in your Bibles to John 1.14. Philip, what did he do? Philip asked Jesus. I want to know God. And then what did Jesus say? You want to know God? Then guess what? You need to know me. And so obviously, then Philip was able to know Jesus because Jesus was right there. But hello, Jesus isn't here on the earth right now. So if I'm going to ask Jesus, Jesus, I want to know God. 
then Jesus is going to say, you have to know me. And then I'll say, well, how do I get to know you? You're not on the earth. I can't call you. I can't, I can't send you a text. I can't FaceTime you. Jesus, how do I get to know you? Well, it says right here in John 1, verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of his only begotten, the Father, full of grace and truth. And the, and the what? And the what? The word. The word. So remember, deep students, a couple years ago, Jesus is the word. So Philip, what did he do? He came up to Jesus and said, Jesus, I want to know God. And Jesus said, then get to know me. me. But then me and you, we go up to God and we say, God, want we want to get to know you. Well, God would say, get to know Jesus. Jesus. And I would say, okay, that's awesome, but how do I do that? Well, that verse just told us, Jesus is the Word. The word. I have to get to know the Word. If I'm going to know God, then I, remember, me, read. me read. I have to read. I cannot get to know God outside of reading the word. And do you know, it would be very, very tragic, honestly, to do a statistic of believers that actually read the word. Now, I'm not talking about you guys. I know you guys read the word every single day. But it is sad to think of so many believers that do not read the word. They don't see the value of reading the word. But see, outside of reading the word, you will not know God. Because outside of reading the word, knowing the word, the Holy Spirit has nothing to reveal to you. When people say the Holy Spirit told me this or told me that, but they don't read the word, was that really the Holy Spirit? No, they're just really good at talking like a Christian. It wasn't the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit cannot work outside of your relationship with the Word. So if you just have a little every once in a while relationship with the Word, is the Holy Spirit able to reveal things to you day after day after day? No. No. Maybe little spurts here and there, but it's not even a lot, just like a baby. And we're going to be looking at this this month. Like a baby can only take milk. Their stomachs, they don't even have teeth. If you give a baby a piece of meat, they'll choke and they could die. Why? Because they're not there yet. Well, there's so many believers that because of their unwillingness to get in the word, and there's no age on spiritual growth. There's like an age on natural, like usually you don't start this until like six months in or nine months in with the baby food. And then you move from the baby food to like the little puffy things and then from the puffy things to whatever. And then now, hello, chicken nuggets, steak, hot Cheetos, pick, right? You move up, right? But it's usually, it's usually like these certain ages. Well, spiritually, it's not that. It is all determined by you and you knowing the word. You growing up spiritually has nothing to do with your age. It has everything to, to do with you simply knowing God, knowing where you are, and then deciding I'm going to grow. So Philip came to Jesus and said, Jesus, I want to know God. And Jesus said, you can know God by what? By getting to know me first. And then me, you, we go to God and say, God, I want to know you. But God's going to say, well, then you need to get to know Jesus. And then I'm going to say, well, how do I get to know Jesus? You got to get in the word. Me have to read. And then look what it says about the Holy Spirit. You're thinking, we've already learned this. Well, guess what? We're going to keep learning it because I want us to grow. And I know, and now I grow. Proverbs 1, 23, look what it says. You read this today, or you will read this today in your Proverbs of the day. Look what it says. Turn at my rebuke. Oh. Turn at my rebuke. Behold, I will pour out my spirit. Everyone say spirit. I will make my words known to you. If you have your own Bible, I would circle and like circle spirit and then do an arrow to make known. So the Spirit makes the Word known. The Holy Spirit makes the Word known. So how do I get to know 
Jesus, how do I get to know God? I read the word. And then the Holy Spirit makes the word known. He reveals what that word means to me. So whenever I read Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart, and then I say, Holy Spirit, what does that mean for me? The Holy Spirit will tell me there's going to be a conversation that some kids are going to be having today, and you need to walk away. He literally reveals exactly what I need to do with that word that day. Now, I might be having a conversation later, and that might come up, but that might be different for Breland. Whenever Breland reads that scripture, guard your heart, then she says, Holy Spirit, make known to me what this means. The Holy Spirit will tell her, well, later on, you're going to be, you're going to be watching TV and something's going to come on and you need to leave the room. It's going to be totally different because guess what? I'm different than Breland. We live in different homes. We have different schedules. There's, we're different. Right. We're different. And so the Holy Spirit is going to reveal the word to me and he'll reveal it to you. And then as I get to know God, I get to know what I'm supposed to do. And then I test myself. Do I really know God? Because listen, if there's not fruit in your life, if your life does not look different than people in the world, and I'm not talking about your schedule, you just coming to church. There's a lot of people that go to church. Do you understand? They go to Catholic church. They go to a Buddhist temple. There's a lot of people that practice setting aside time to come together with people that believe like them. That doesn't mean you know God. That doesn't mean you're growing. I know I'm growing when my life outside of church looks different. It should look different. I should not cuss like people in the world. I should not be looking at stuff like people in the world. I should not be watching the same stuff the world watches. Do you know why? Because I'm different. I'm a child of the Most High God, and I know God. And God's not watching that stuff. Is God talking like that? No. No. Is God having those conversations about somebody else? No. No. Is God up there trying to figure out who likes who? And who's doing this and who's doing, is God doing that? No, there's people died and went to hell today. So do you know what he's doing? The Bible says that Jesus is interceding. He's praying that people will go to other people and share the love of God with them so they don't have to die and go to hell. He's not preoccupied with all of this natural carnal stuff. He's thinking people are dying and going to hell today. He's watching as people die and go to hell. And so if God is focused on that, then guess what? I should be focused on that. But if I don't get to know God personally, then I just treat this whole thing as like we show up to church and then we go home and it looks a little bit different at home sometimes. Sometimes my parents do this and sometimes they don't. Sometimes I do this and sometimes I don't. We treat it like it's just some casual thing and it's not casual. People died and went to hell today. People died and went to hell. People on earth will never see their family if they get saved and go to heaven because they died and went to hell today. And whenever you know God, you know, like people matter to God and all this other stuff is just noise. That is a distraction. But if you don't know God, then you keep everything very casual. You treat it very casual. I can disobey when I want. I can be disrespectful if I want. I can read my Bible if I want, but I don't have to. I can pray in the Holy spirit, but I don't have to. I can give, but I don't have to. I can tithe, but I don't have to. We treat things very casually. And look what the Bible says. Go in your Bibles to 1 John 3. Y'all, if you don't know him, then you'll just perform, and then you'll walk away. Performers always walk away. Just like shows on Broadway. They're going to close the curtain on your show. And then what are you going to do? You'll go right back into the world. And then when Jesus comes back, guess where you'll be? You'll still be here. And hopefully you don't give in and take the mark of the beast. First John 3. But if you're weak now without any threat, you'll be weak then. First John 3, 6. Whosoever abides in him, what does he not do? Read it in your Bible. Whosoever abides in him, what? Does anyone have it open in your Bible? I have it. 
Zariah, tell me, whoever abides in him, what? Huh? What? Just read it, baby. What does it say? Verse 6. Loud, loud, loud. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. Say no one. Well, this just seems like pretty legalistic, like I can't do that and I can't do that. When you know God and you know that people died and went to hell today, you know that people are hopeless today, it's like, I don't want to sin. I don't want to disobey my parents. I don't want to be disrespectful. I don't want to skip out on time with him. Because when you know him, you don't sin. So that's a good test, right? Whosoever sins has not seen him. Well, where do I see him? In the Word. In the Word. And then who reveals it to me? Jesus. The Holy Spirit reveals it to me. Right? I see him in the Word. The Holy Spirit shows me. And so what do I stop doing? And y'all, you know what sin is. How many of y'all can raise your hand and say, I know what sin looks like? Whatever level it is. Who knows what sin looks like? Who can tell me what sin is? Not a specific. But what is sin? Sadie. Right, disobedience. It's what is another definition? Sin. What is sin? Ellis. Backbiting. Backbiting. But what would like all encompassing well, sin? Sin is yeah. doing yeah. what? No? Titan? Watching things you're not supposed to. Watching things you're not supposed to. But what it's is sin? God. Sin is going against what? The word. God. The word. What the word says. That's sin. Sin is going against the word of God. Do you know the Bible even says that worry is sin? Taking on cares is sin. And so whenever you get to know God, you know the difference between right and wrong. And as you get to know him more, you just start doing all of the yeses and you stop doing all of the noes. You're not like fearful. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do this. I can't do that. No, you're like, I can lay hands on the sick and they recover. I can give my tithes and offerings and receive a hundredfold return. I can pray in the spirit and ministering spirits go before me and make crooked places straight. Instead of focusing on what you can't do, you realize all that you can do and then it's game over, right? The devil's scared. He's crapping his pants and you're just going from faith to faith and glory to glory. Because if you know God, say if you know God. If you know God. If you know him, what happens? You don't sin. And in him is no sin. Whosoever abides in him sinneth not. Now look what it says in verse 7. Can you put it up there? Verse 7. Little children. My dear children. Little children. Little children. This is what the scripture is saying. This is a scripture just for me. Willie George put it this way. I was telling Titan about this earlier. Gospel Bill, Willie George. He went to a church with his grandma and they never told him about Jesus. They never gave him a chance to make Jesus the Lord of his life. He would come into the regular service and it was like they didn't even acknowledge him. You're little, they would say you're too young or you're too little to receive this. Well, all the while at home, his mom was like taking a bunch of pills. He, sh she walked by um, Gospel Bill, Willie George, and John George, the man that preaches here. She walked by their room one night. She thought they were asleep. And she looked in their room and she said, I wonder what they're going to think when they find me dead tomorrow. And then she walked into the bathroom. And Willie George, as a little boy, he heard his mom saying that. He gets up, he hears the bathroom door close, he goes and he bangs on the door and he's like, mom, mom. And she's like, son, I've taken so many pills, I'm gonna be gone. He puts on his pants, he runs across a big field to his grandma's house, they lived in a little apartment, ran across a field, no shoes or nothing, in the middle of the night, runs across to get his grandparents so that they can come to the house, take her to the hospital and pump her stomach to get the drugs. And then the next, the next time, 
She's, he's fought, walking into the room and there's blood everywhere where she tried to cut herself and bleed to death. And he's like, what is going on? And the parents, the grandparents said, well, you know, she's going to be in a hospital and she was in a hospital. And she's, and Willie George said, you know, those people at that, at church, they thought I was too young to know the truth. They thought I was too little to be exposed to the truth that there is a God that loves me and I can have a good life. But the devil didn't think I was too little. He didn't think I was too young. And y'all, the devil doesn't think you're too young to start popping up stuff on your phone, to start getting your mind twisted and off with these stupid shows that they're playing now. He doesn't think you're too young. What is all of that noise trying to do? It's trying to mark you. And if he can get you to know more about the world than about the word, he's got you trapped. And then what happens? You're trapped in a life of sin. And you come to church. Some of you have been coming to church since you were born. But you're trapped in a life of sin. Why? Because when you found out the truth, you thought it was okay to ignore it. You thought it was okay to just push it to the side. Well, I'm a kid. It's not that big of a deal. It is a big deal. The enemy is out to mark you. And just like I've said over and over again, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he doesn't care how old you are. He doesn't care. He doesn't care that you're barely four or barely five. He will try to mark you. Why? Because if he can get you to know the world, then he can keep you from knowing the word. So you have to decide, you know what? I'm not going to focus on what I can't do. I'm going to focus on what I can do. I can get to know God. I can flow in the supernatural. I can lay hands on the sick, just like I've already said. I can cast out devils. I can declare peace in my home. I can pray in the Holy Spirit for my city, for my school, for my parents. I can get witty ideas and inventions for a job, for stuff to sell. I can create something now. Remember, I showed you all those little kids that had those big things. Well, how much more us with the presence of God living on the inside of us? Y'all, I have to decide I'm going to know God. I'm going to know him. And look, the Bible even says little children. That's for me. He wants me to know. And are you so grateful that God literally, he didn't just put that in there by accident. Oh, maybe one time, sometimes in a kid's church, they're going to read that little children. I'm a little, no. He's like, you need to picture the father God, like leaning over the throne room of heaven saying, this is for you. Get it. This is for you. Get it. Don't, don't walk away from it. He said, little children, let no man deceive you. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Well, if I don't do this, I'll be called this. If I don't talk this, then I'll be called that. If I don't fit in, then I'll never have friends. If this, if that, let no man, little children, picture God. Get this. That's what he's saying. Get this. Let no man deceive you. It goes on to say, he that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. What I do matters. And what I'm producing in my life should reflect the father. I've been made righteous. Yes. But what I do should be righteous. And it's not about performing and putting on. It's about simply saying, God, I want to know you. And as I get to know you, I'm going to grow like things that I never thought were possible. Things like just in my mind, laying hands on someone in a wheelchair and them getting up and their body fully restored things that I used to think would be impossible. God, I want to walk in those things having this kind of money to give and to sow and to bless people with things that seemed impossible. God, they're not impossible because I know you. And so little children tonight, this is our word for tonight. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. I can't just go through the motions and think I'm good. I've got to know him and allow the Holy Spirit to reveal it to me. And then I have to decide this is where I am. And then I've got to decide to grow. Because y'all, there's, there's big things ahead for you. This is the generation that is going to see Jesus part the clouds. You're going to hear the trumpet. Do you understand? Like, this is a big deal. Like, you were born for such a time as this, just like Esther. And that's our conference. It's going to be amazing. Like, you're the kids that are going in, and thousands of lives will be saved because of you. But if you take your time right now and just think it's not a big deal, I can do this, I can do that, No. Put up verse um, six one more time. If you know him, if you abide in him, you do not sin. But do you know what you do do? You do lay hands on the sick. You do minister the gospel. 
you do see increase in your finances. That quarter you sowed isn't just a quarter. Yeah. What is a hundredfold return on a quarter? Uh, $25. $25? That's what, whatever it is, I don't know. $25. $25. That's not just money I throw. I can, I can give and sow cheerfully and honor God and see a harvest. That's what I can do. I don't have to, no, I just can't do this and I can't do that. No, I can. I can honor God. I can live a life that's an example to those that are younger than me instead of joining in on their stupidity. But it's up to you. Little children, what? Don't be deceived. Say, I will not be deceived. Say, I will not be deceived. Say, the enemy may try to mark me, but he can't. I'm going to know God. I'm going to know his word. And I'm going to grow. And you will. And you will. Just watch a year from now, six months from now, There'll be so much growth in your life. You'll look back at this night and say, look at how far I've come. When you just decide, I'm going to grow. 